Uh, my name is Ulyssa Dines, and I am double majoring in theater and politics with a minor in business, and I am a senior at the University of Dubuque. What got me interested in theater was, actually it was movies actually. I would um, sit at home with my mom watching old 1930s and 40s movies and I just thought, you know, that just looks fun. It just looks fun to, you know, act something out. And then then I came to University of Dubuque and I wanted to pursue theater. And what I really love about it is just that there's just a warm community uh, with everyone around and, I mean, it just feels like home. The play that I'm performing is Before Breakfast by Eugene O'Neill. And that is about a woman who in New York City, Christopher Street, in the 1915, she is in a New York tenement, essentially, and she has been living this life that she doesn't like, and her husband's basically a deadbeat. Den gets another girl pregnant, so, but classic Eugene O'Neill. The character Mrs. Rowland is really a relatable character, in my opinion. A lot of things that, you know, happened back then still happen today, and I just, you know, thought it was still current and relevant, and it would send a message to just anyone who would listen. When you're up on stage, you don't want to be tense, you know, you don't, you don't want to be straining yourself so the most important thing when getting into a character especially mrs roland is just to be comfortable within yourself and then let the moment take you because i mean you already know the script you already know the moments you already know the parts so it's just you just have to train yourself just to go out there and perform i just love the connection of theater i love being with people i love it just connecting and creating a moment and creating this atmosphere where people can create and where the audience can feel, you know, a place to either ex- escape from daily life or think about things that, you know, you want to think about in your regular life. So um, that's what I kind of like about theater. It's communal and yet it still makes you feel kind of a part of something. I would love to pursue, or at least try to pursue an acting career, and if it does work out, then great. If not, well, maybe I'll have something else figured out. (laughs) Theater is something that shouldn't be thrown away. Theater is something where you either come to escape or it's where you um, come to have your mind expanded. You know, it's, it's, it's all the above, and I think theater is something that shouldn't be, um, shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who has helped me in the process of creating this capstone. I know without you guys, I couldn't have done it. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my family as well for being so supportive. And uh, I just, I can't wait to perform tonight. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this, enjoy the show. So thanks. <laughs>
Alfred? Alfred! You needed to pretend you're asleep. I knew it. Alfred? Alfred! Don't you think it's about time you got up? Do you want to stay in bed all day? Not that I've got any doubts of you being lazy enough to stay in bed forever. Goodness knows what time it is. We haven't even got anything to tell the time since you pawned your watch, like a fool. The last valuable thing we had, and you knew it. It's been nothing but pawn, pawn, pawn with you. Anything to put off getting a job, anything to put off going to work like a man. Alfred, get up. I want to make that bed before I go. I'm tired of having this place in a continual muss on your account. Goodness knows I do my part and more, sewing my fingers off all day while you play the gentleman and loaf around bar rooms with those good for nothing lot of artists from the square. And where are you going to get the money? I'd like to know. The rent's due this week, and you know what the landlord is. He won't let us stay a minute past our time. You say you can't get a job. That's a lie, and you know it. You never even look for one.
All you do is moan around here all day, writing silly little poetries and stories that no one will buy. And no wonder they won't. I notice how I can get a position, such as it is. And it's only that which keeps us from starving to death. You've got to find the money someplace today. I can't do it all, and, and I won't do it all. You, you've got to come to your senses. You, you've got to, to beg, uh, borrow, or, or steal it somewhere. <laughs> but where? I'd like to know. You're too proud to beg. You've borrowed the limit and you haven't the nerve to steal. Aren't you up yet? It's just like you to go back to bed, or at least pretend to. Well, you are up. It's about time. You needn't look at me like that. Your airs don't fool me any longer. I know you too well. Better than you think I do, you and your going-ons. I know a lot of things, my dear. Never mind what I know now. You needn't worry. I'll tell you before I go. <sighs> well... I suppose I should get breakfast ready. Not that there's much to get. Unless you have any money? Foolish question. I ought to know you better than that. When you ran out in such a huff last night, I knew what had happened. You can't be trusted for a second. A nice condition you came home in last night. The fight we had was only for you to make a beast out of yourself. You know, what was the point in pawning your watch when all you wanted to do with the money was waste it and buying drink? Hurry up! Doesn't take long to get breakfast ready, thanks to you. All we have this morning is bread, butter, and coffee. And you wouldn't even have that if it wasn't for me sewing my fingers off all day. The bread stale! I hope you like it. You don't deserve any better. But I don't see why I should suffer. The coffee will be ready in a minute. You needn't expect me to wait for you. What on earth are you doing all this time? Well, you're almost dressed at any rate. I expected to find you back in bed. That'd be just like you. How awful you look this morning. For goodness sake, shave. You look disgusting. You look like a tramp. No wonder nobody will hire you when you don't even look halfway decent. I don't blame them. There's plenty of hot water here. You've got no excuse. Here! Uh, lo 
look at your hands tremble. You better give up that drinking. You're not fit out. You're not cut out for it. It's just like you're going to get the DTs. That would be the last straw. <gasps> Look at the mess you've made on this floor. Cigarette butts and ashes everywhere. Why can't you put them on a tray? No. No, you wouldn't be considerate enough to do that. You don't have to sweep the floor, and that's all you care about. I'm late, I'm liable to lose my position, and then I couldn't support you any longer. Then you'd have to find a job or something dreadful like that. What I want to know is whether you're going to get a job today or not. Your, your family won't help us a bit anymore. They've had enough of you too. You know, I'm about sick of this life. I have a good notion to go home right now if I weren't too proud to tell my family what a failure you've been. Hugh, the millionaire Roland's only son. The Harvard graduate. The poet. The catch of the town. Not many of them would envy my catch if they knew the truth. <sighs> you know, what has our marriage been? I'd like to know. Even before your millionaire father died, owing everybody in the world money, you never wasted any of your time on your wife. I suppose you thought I ought to be glad you were honorable enough to marry me after getting me into trouble. You were ashamed of me with your fine friends because my father was only a grocer. Well, at least he's honest. That's more that I could say about yours. <sighs> you had hoped everyone think you'd be forced to marry me and pity you, didn't you? I mean, you didn't hesitate much into making me believe your lies and telling me you loved me before it happened. You made me think you didn't want your father to buy me off as he tried to do. I know better than that now. I haven't lived with you all these years for nothing. It's lucky the poor thing was born dead. What a father you've been. But I'm not the only one who has you to thank to be unhappy. There's another, and she can't hope to marry you. How about this, Helen? Don't look at me like that. Yes, I read your letter. What about it? I had a right to. I am your wife. And I know everything there is to know. So don't lie. Don't look at me like that. Your superior airs don't fool me any longer. Only for me, you'd be going without breakfast this very morning. You've never had any gratitude for what I've done. The coffee will be ready. The coffee's ready.
I'm not going to wait for you. My head aches so much this morning. It's a shame I've got to go to work all day in such a stuffy room in my condition. I wouldn't have to if you were half a man. By rights, I ought to be laying on my back instead of you. You know how sick I've been this past year, and yet you object for me to take anything to keep my spirits up. You didn't even want me to take that tonic I got at the drugstore. I know how glad you'd be to have me dead, because then you'd be free to run after those girls who think you're such a wonderful, misunderstood person, this Helen and the others. There, you cut yourself. I knew you would. That ought to be a lesson to you, that you ought to be running around late at night, drinking with your nerves in such an awful shape. Why are you so pale? What are you staring at yourself in the mirror for? For, for goodness sakes, wipe the blood off your face. It's horrible. There. That's better. I could never stay in the side of blood. Why do you look at me like that? Are you still mad that I read your letter? Well, I had a right to read it. I am your wife. I knew this whole time you were running around with someone. Your lame excuses about spending your nights at the library didn't fool me. Who is this Helen anyways? Is she an artist or does she write poetry too? Her letters sound like it. I bet you she told you your things were the best she's ever read. And you believed her like a fool. Is she young and pretty? I was young and pretty before you fooled me with your fine poetic talk, but life with you would ruin anybody. What I've been through. Breakfast is ready. Breakfast. Your coffee will be cold. For goodness sakes, what are you still doing? Still shaving? You better give it up. One of these mornings, you're going to give yourself a serious cut. I've got to run as soon as I'm finished. One of us has got to work. Are you or aren't you going to find a job today? I should suppose one of your fine friends should help you. But I guess they just like to hear you talk. I feel sorry for this Helen, whoever she is. Haven't you got any feelings for other people? What will her parents say? 
I see she mentions them in her letter. So what is she going to do? Have the child or go to one of those doctors? It's a nice thing, I must say. Where can she get the money? Is she rich? You won't tell me a thing about her. Much I care. Come to think of it, I don't feel sorry for her. She knew what she was doing. She wasn't like any schoolgirl like I was from the looks of her letter. Does she know you're married? Of course she does. All your fine friends know about your unhappy marriage. I know they pity you, but they don't know my side. They'd talk differently if they did. You know, this Helen must be a fine one. If she knew you were married, what does she expect then? That I'm crazy enough to divorce you and let her Marry you? I guess not. And after all you've put me through, and you know you can't divorce me. No one could ever say I've done anything wrong. She deserves to suffer. That's all I can say. No. I'll tell you what I think. I think your Helen is nothing but a common streetwalker. That's what I think. Oh, did you cut yourself again? Serves you right. I've got to be going. This is a fine life for me to be living, and I won't stand for your loafing any longer. There, you've overturned the water over everything. Don't say you haven't. I can hear it dripping on the floor. Alfred, why don't you answer me? Alfred, what is it you knocked over? Alfred, answer me. Are you still drunk?